my name again is Jana Nixon, and I am now working with Corporate College, as Anne indicated, um, which is the training arm of uh, Collin College. So we provide professional development and customized training for our industry partners and their um, incumbent employees. So I just have to put in a little pitch for us. Um, so as career coaches, we are often asked about IT portfolios and more and more faculty had been requesting that of us. And Tara and I compiled this particular presentation, which uh, typically we take about an hour to present. So this is going to be the um, accelerated version that you're going to get, the express version. So um, let's just start out with where uh, portfolios originated. So to the best of my knowledge, they really started out with uh, the creative industry, and it was very prevalent uh, back in the day, like when I was in advertising, uh, to go to a job interview and to bring samples of your work with you. And that would look like writing samples, design samples, maybe even letters of recommendation, your uh, resume, that kind of thing. Um, and because that gave employers such a great um, idea as to a student's capability, I think that IT and more of the technical fields have started embracing this uh, concept. And so we're going to talk a little bit about what a portfolio is. And if you think about it, it's really just an organized presentation of your documents and artifacts to convince an employer that you have the talent or those marketable skills that Eric was referring to earlier, and that you're growing professionally. So for a student who has, is compiling a, a portfolio, they may only have samples of coursework that they've completed. Perhaps they've even put together a, a local network at their home. You know, those are the kinds of, or they've developed an app or done something on their own. What we want to do is provide the employer evidence that we're passionate about our particular um, area of um, study and that we are growing and gaining skills to that end. So we base not just the portfolio on those technical skills, but also on the marketability skills that are so important to employers. And we have compiled this list, or we didn't compile it, actually NACE, the National Association of Colleges and Employers, uh, compiled this list and it's been pretty much the same for the for the past I don't know I, I've been in career development for a number of years but for a good long while and oral and written communication skills have always been at the fore in terms of what employers are seeking in their new hires and what they're also seeing that um, recent graduates are lacking um, especially in the technical realm. And um, I've, I've served on some different builds and, and advisory committee and uh, meetings, and I've um, regularly heard that this is an area um, or a skills gap that exists for our technical students. So, um, but just recently, uh, within the past three years, critical thinking and problem solving has actually tied with that oral and written communication skill set. So I just think that's a very interesting um, development that has probably, I don't know how much that has to do with uh, just the um, kinds of students that are um, graduating and, or I'm just, I don't know exactly what to attribute it to, but I think it's very important. And I urge students to really consider ways that they can provide evidence that they have that particular skill as they go and present uh, to an employer their portfolio or go through the interview process. And these are the other skills that are pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to spend any time going over that. I want to be able to allow plenty of time for Tara to do um, her part of the presentation. Obviously, the uh, portfolio has changed. Um, when I went to, a port, uh, to an interview, I took a book 
a notebook that had a bunch of papers in it um, that I had organized, and you know, it was it was hopefully a professional presentation. But now everything can be done electronically, and students are able to demonstrate their abilities and their skills and their knowledge just through the sending of a link to an employer, um, and all of their portfolio information can be right there. And so what we want them to think about is, is what would be important to an employer. So we urge them to look at uh, the, the job descriptions that they are interested in pursuing and seeing what the employer is looking for and making sure that that's documented in their resume, which you see there on the right, but also in some of those artifacts that I referred to earlier. Perhaps they have some industry certifications. That's great. Let's make sure that that's evident. Perhaps they've done a, um, set up a computer network. Um, so let's show that schematic. Uh, so it, maybe they've created an avatar or a website. We want to make sure that we're giving them ideas of things that they can feature that maybe they haven't actually developed on the job, but they developed in the classroom. And again, going back to that marketable soft skill of writing and verbal communication, perhaps they want to um, include a video of a class presentation or a research paper, or a white paper that they've written, just to, to confirm that they have those skills that are so important to the employers. And there are a lot of different places where students can um, build their portfolio free. And so what we wanna do is just make sure that they're aware that they don't have to go out and spend a ton of money in order to create a portfolio that they can share with employers. Uh, obviously, most or all of these probably do have a pro version where you can uh, send in, um, you know, have a, a monthly subscription or whatever, but um, most of these, well, all of these do have a free component. And, and so we just want them to know what's out there and we urge them to explore these different uh, venues, if you will, or platforms. Um, I think a lot of those that are most, um, I think, easiest for our computer networking and maybe cyber students to use who may not have quite as much um, programming experience, you know, they can use WordPress quite easily. They can use LinkedIn. LinkedIn has a number of places where they can upload information that can showcase their skill set. And I mean, they can even do something so simple as Flipsnack, which is just a compilation of PDFs. And it's just quick and easy, but you know, it's something that they can use in an interview to talk through certain skills that they have, or to provide to an employer to convince them that they're worthy of an interview. So next, I'd like to just talk a little bit about um, how do I make a, a portfolio? And Tara's really going to elaborate on this, thankfully, but we just really want students to not wait until the last minute to start thinking about a portfolio. They need to, to start thinking about this from day one. And, and we go into the classroom and we tell them, start taking, um, you know, start saving these different um, projects that you work on and, um, you know, maybe have a little folder set aside where you can, you can uh, place these and be able to then, when you're ready to develop your portfolio, you can go and you can organize them in a meaningful way that will demonstrate your skill set and your abilities. So uh, we urge them to come up with a, um, an outline or even a flow chart um, and then go from there in terms of compiling the information or the data that the employers are going to be looking for. So Tara, take it away. All right, thank you, Jana. Um, when I talk with students, I talk about starting with a goal for your portfolio in mind. Um, and I love the statement that starting with a goal, um, if you don't do that, it's basically like going to the grocery store hungry, right? You're not really focusing on what you need to do. You're focused more on um, what looks great and you're just kind of grabbing at things. 
So the rules of engagement um, for portfolios make it easy to find. And um, this kind of goes hand in hand with LinkedIn too. Um, customize your URL, make it easy to find, make it match your other social media um, or your other branding, self-branding that you put out there. So usually first name, middle initial, last name, something easy that they can find. Make sure it's easy to navigate. It doesn't have to be complicated. It can be very simple in design. It doesn't have to be fancy. You don't have to be a graphic designer. And then make sure that you're showcasing your best work. And that, um, when talking with students, they're like, oh, but I don't have enough projects to put in there. It doesn't matter. You can put, maybe just start with one or two that really showcases what you can do. And then, like Jana was saying, encouraging them to start early will give them more of their best work to show going forward. So they can start small and then just see it as something like your resume, your LinkedIn, you should always be updating it. So thinking about what they want to show off in a portfolio, think about the project work that you've done, what kind of consistent results are you getting. Think about making sure that you include your resume or link to your resume and social media. Are you using that professionally? Has it been reviewed? Like your resume, has it been looked at? How are you connecting with other people? Um, are you using social media professionally? And um, that can be LinkedIn um, to do networking. Twitter um, is a really great way to network as well. So thinking about those things, think about the collaborative projects that students are working on, and that can be in class or outside of class. And um, how do they want to present those projects? And then their process. A lot of times employers are going to want to see how students demonstrate their process. And that goes along with that critical thinking and problem solving and being able to demonstrate that. So they're showing their process. They might even show, here are the steps that I took and here's the failures that I encountered and then this is how I solved them and got these results. So thinking about how they want to show that. And then just staying relevant with things, um, staying up to date, seeing what are trends in the industry and what the job descriptions are looking for, and then seeing how that reflects in their portfolio and what they're putting in there and updating. And then thinking about um, if they want to have their own website. So um, Jana touched on this, that there are a lot of applications and a lot of things that students can use that are free, but thinking about their career and going forward in the future, do they want to pay for a domain name? It's, it might depend on what they're going for, if they're doing website or app development versus something else. So thinking about those things, what are they okay with ads if it's free? Um, what site builder are they using? How much do they consider as reasonable if they do want to pay? And then is it, again, easy to remember, searchable? And then, like I said, and professional across platforms. So thinking about this planning and these steps to take, um, I always ask them, think about all the pages that you want to be involved in your portfolio first. So how do you want to map that out? What are your, you have your main page, your landing page, and then what are your sub pages? And then think about the content that you want to put in those pages. Do you want one page that's for your projects? Or do you want to have sub pages underneath to kind of, you know, vary them by topic or, or have them categorized by topic? So thinking about those and thinking about the content. And that content includes, um, it can include a visual, it can also include a descriptor. So then you're bringing in that ability to um, have written communication is how are you writing about your project and your process? And then again, putting your best foot forward, thinking about showing the work towards the job that you want or career that you want. And then again, demonstrating that process. Think about problems that they're wanting to solve. Think about the story that they want to tell. So when working with students, um, when I talk with them about interviewing, about presenting themselves, um, it's branding yourself, it's telling your story. So what is this portfolio telling about you and how you want to um, present yourself professionally. And then give them a glimpse, give people a glimpse of your visual process, the notes on that process. 
and then have people look at it. Um, I always encourage students, don't just have us career coaches look at your resume or your LinkedIn or your portfolio. Have a lot of people look at it. Ask for advice. That's an also a great way for them to network is to just ask for um, industry professionals to provide them advice and be able to answer why. So I think this is really important um, when students are interviewing they're often going to be asked why. Okay, well, tell me how you went through this process. How did you get to this conclusion? Why did you do it this way? And I think that's a really important step for students to be able to answer the why. And then making sure that they give credit. So if you're working on a team project, make sure that that descriptor gives credit to other people that were responsible for parts of those projects. Um, what software or hardware did you use when you were building this or creating this? That can be really important. So then you're able to tell an employer, here's what I created, here was my process, and then here's what I used to do that. So they can see your level of proficiency with different technology. So my background is working with students in um, animation gaming, but I think the same principles apply. So we brought up just some examples of student portfolio sites. And again, these are gonna be more on the creative arts, but again, it's just showing students the simplicity of how to do a website or how to do a portfolio site, that it doesn't have to involve a lot. Um, that you can see that they have a really simple, easy to find link. Um, and then they just have a homepage and about me page, and then they've categorized their project. So for this one for Kara, it was design and illustration. Um, she's using Wix, um, which is a free platform. And then again, here you can just see that she has, here's a few little sub pages that show her work, her projects, a little bit about her and her contact information. And then we get into the more technical. So here we have a GitHub example. Um, I'm not as familiar with tech portfolios yet. I'm working on that one. But here we see kind of here's a project that's presented through GitHub pages, and we can see what went into that project, the different files, um, the different issues that they ran into. So here's kind of a different way to do this, and GitHub um, tends to be a pretty popular one mentioned. And then this is um, one, just um, one that we found as an example of a student who's a web developer, um, and a learner and just an awesome dude. So um, that's a very memorable um, part of his portfolio. And this one was just an easy, basic, he has his different pages, but it's just a scroll. Like it just, when you hit one of the hyperlinks above, it just keeps scrolling down to that section. So again, it's just showing that it's very simple. Um, it can look like a number of different ways. And then troubleshooting. So thinking about if you go to an interview and you want to talk with your um, with the employer or the hiring manager about your portfolio, but okay, if something happened, you don't have access. So have a backup plan, having a PDF version that you can show them. Jana mentioned back in the day when we used to bring paper portfolios. Um, so even just thinking back to that, what is something you can just to be able to show someone? So it could be a PDF if you don't have Wi-Fi or you run into technical issues. Thinking about good design, which in this case, simple design. Um, how do you capture attention? Great work to keep that attention. Um, and working in gaming and animation, often employers will look at a demo reel before they even look at a resume. And we always heard like, they look at your portfolio for maybe five, 10 seconds. If they don't like what they see, they're gonna move on. So this is just a way to, how do you capture that, that attention and create a great first impression? And then having your portfolio link and some examples of your work in LinkedIn. So Jana mentioned that too. Now over 93% of employers are utilizing LinkedIn. And I'm sure that's just, it's probably going to be more than that now. Um, but they're using LinkedIn to look for talent, to see what someone looks like there. I always told students, instead of having an employer Google you, give them a LinkedIn link so they can see you there. They don't have to Google you. And then we provide just some resources for students. 
Um, so there's a video on creating an online portfolio that um, we use in the presentation with students, but we cut out for time here. Um, a link on setting up portfolio websites um, with GitHub, and then LinkedIn Learning and just encouraging students to use that um, to learn more about building online portfolios.